Most of the vacationers returning to New York City from their Havana holiday aboard the ship were sleeping peacefully in their cabins in the small hours of the morning on 8 September 1934. Later, nobody knew for sure just how the fire started in the locker located in the ship's first class writing room on deck B. Once it had started, however, it quickly burned through the main electrical cables, cutting off the ship's lights. Next, it cut the hydraulic lines, and the ship's rudder became useless. The fire moved on, ravenously feeding on the flammable varnishes and ornate carved wooden furnishings and fine carpets. Within an hour, flame had engulfed the darkened ship. In the ensuing chaos, visibility was almost nil between the darkness of night and the billowing smoke. Only half of the ship's lifeboats were launched, and only 85 of the 549 people traveling on the ship, mostly crew members, were aboard them. 135 people died as a result of the tragic fire aboard the SS Morrow Castle that day. What happened in response turned out to create an even greater tragedy, however. Preventing fires at sea. There is almost nothing that mariners fear more than a fire at sea. As a result of the SS Morrow Castle tragedy, Congress passed laws requiring mandatory crew training in firefighting, the use of emergency generators, automatic fire doors, and the use of fire retardant materials in shipbuilding. In the 1930s, that material was asbestos. Over the next 40 years, asbestos was used to insulate nearly every shipboard component. This is especially true in the engine and boiler rooms of old steam-powered vessels. Over the years, however, this insulation had a tendency to become brittle and begins to crumble into dust, producing free-floating microscopic fibers of asbestos. The corporations that produce asbestos products were well aware of the health dangers of asbestos. To allow this to become public knowledge, however, would have meant that the shipbuilding industry would have had to find a different fire retardant, which would have cost these corporations billions in profits. It was decided in the late 1930s to hide this information from the public. The information was an open secret, but there was no proof until the discovery of letters in 1977, clearly showing that the two largest asbestos corporations, Raybestos and Johns Manville, had agreed to hide findings of scientific studies they had commissioned, which confirmed the link between asbestos and respiratory disease. Compensation. Liability is often difficult to determine in asbestos cases. One reason is the latency period. Symptoms of mesothelioma may not appear for decades after exposure. Another problem is that many asbestos companies have gone bankrupt because of litigation costs and judgments against them. In asbestos cases involving the maritime industry, it can be even more complicated. If a plaintiff were to sue a shipping company, it would need to be proven that the company had full knowledge of asbestos dangers and failed to take action to prevent injury. It is also possible to sue the vessel. Under maritime law, a ship is considered a legal entity, much like a corporation or an estate. However, damages are limited to the value of the ship at the time the suit is filed. Only a knowledgeable lawyer with experience in asbestos litigation can determine the most effective course of action in pursuing a particular asbestos suit. However, this will probably consist of action against the asbestos manufacturer or more likely its successors. Even companies that have become bankrupt are usually bought up by larger corporations. When this happens, the corporation that purchases another company incurs its liabilities as well. Thank you for watching. This video was produced by asbestos.net a leading resource on all aspects of asbestos and mesothelioma. Our priority is to inform victims about the devastating effects of asbestos exposure, mesothelioma, asbestos cancer, asbestosis, and other asbestos-related diseases, and to advise them with a wealth of information. Individuals whose lives have been touched by mesothelioma have numerous questions and concerns. Their caregivers and family members also need accurate, reliable information. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos cancer and need more information, we invite you to visit and explore the thousands of pages of oncologist-reviewed material on asbestos.net, 
to call our convenient toll-free number shown below and speak with a mesothelioma specialist or to use the simple contact form found at asbestos.net to request a free copy of our informative books, custom inserts, and DVD. Asbestos.net, information and help for patients and families.